We are in um, chapter, we're in Genesis chapter 17. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, s'il vous plaît. Uh, I've really felt like the Lord, uh, now last time we just kind of had a big free for all with talking and getting, you know, getting to hear from everybody, which was wonderful. And, by the way, the feedback I got from everyone was they just really, really enjoyed it. And I, I think that's great. I did, too. I extremely did. <clears throat> and to hear from, from you and how you're doing. And, and sorry, again, we didn't get to hear from everybody. And we'll probably do that again sometime. And I'll, I'll try to get to, get to everyone else. Uh, anyway, what I was going to say is <clears throat> that the time before that, uh, I shared on uh, the name change that God gave to Abram. And uh, to me, that area is so significant. I mean, it's, it's um, remember that s chapter 17 of Genesis is a whole change from just Abraham believing and, uh, and that word is used a lot, or belief, or believing, or believe. Uh, in the chapters leading up to that, 11 through 16. But here in 17, um, one of the first thing God says is walk before me. And, and that is releasing a spirit of, of um, this uh, covenant relations, walking in covenant relations with God, with being with him. And um, uh, the interesting thing is, is that God's wanting us to walk in those covenant relations or was wanting Abram to walk in those. But he knew that he needed to fortify him. And so he gave him a new name. And um, with that name change was another perspective of God of him no longer as Abram. Uh, glorious father, exalted father, but the father of many nations. And we talked about this. And I kind of want to maybe even read a little bit of what I did last time because I just believe it's, it's so significant. And it is, it is the Lord reaching out, not just to Abram, Abraham, <clears throat> but you can go into Genesis or Romans or, you know, all uh, Hebrews, all in the New Testament you find Abraham being mentioned and that the, uh, the Abrahamic covenant and uh, being children of Abraham or, or uh, Abraham's seed in that sense by Christ. And um, I mean, it's, it, is, it is the guy that was basically known as God coming down <clears throat> and Really, when he started talking about your name change is no longer exalted father, it's going to be father of a multitude. God was, and I think that was in the notes that I, I read last time. Maybe I'll cover a little of that again because it's so significant. Um, uh, he, was, he was opening a part of himself up to Abraham to see that he is a fault, father. And he just doesn't want to be an exalted father. He wants to be the father of a multitude. He wants that seed in all of us and to have that nature in all of us. And so, um, and, and that's his hopes and dreams and aspirations. That's what I, that's what I was seeing out of it. I, that this is his hopes and his dreams and the things that, that he longed for, not, you know, way back when Abraham first, or Abram first entered the land, no. Not way back in the era of Chaldees when he first called him, no. Not way back when Abram was born, no. Uh, before the foundation of the world, this is what he desired as, a, as the father, the father. This was the father's desire. And you can, you can read that in Hebrews, you know. Uh, that he would get many sons out of it. And of course, we know that that's, that must be sons in the image of Christ or will fail of this part of covenant relations that is ours. Because now it's us, it's him and us. 
and it's uh, and it's all on an individual basis as we walk in not just what he says like faith but walk in what he says that you are and believe that above what you believe whether you think you're well no I'm still an exalted father or mother or whatever <clears throat> an exalted person no you know he's wanting you to bear that seed and to bring forth that seed to others this is this is the this is like um, this is like the new creation um, uh, in that um, Oh, I just, uh, I was just, you know, I sometimes, I don't know, I, this, it's just like the Spirit comes and tells me something. But I, I remember when, um, uh, when Jesus was being baptized and the Holy Spirit came down like a dove. And, and it's like he, he came down on the new creation. But in a sense, he didn't. He came down and Jesus of Nazareth, the one who's about to be baptized to start his ministry, the Holy Spirit, the dove, comes down and presents him to us. And the Father joins in this time, says, this is my beloved earnest of the new creation. And Jesus was like a, like a twig, an earnest, in the mouth of the dove, like with Noah. And... Um, I, you know, these things move me because um, what I, I don't see teachings. Um, I don't, you know, I don't remember half of the teachings, but I, I remember the life of them. And I, I remember uh, certain parts that, that just quickened life in me. And um, uh, to me, you know, I see God constantly in different ways and different times just kind of pulling back the veil and showing himself and closing it again so that because we we couldn't take it if he just went ha ah! you know we just ah! you know it'd be too much it'd just be overwhelming you know ah! you know but instead um, he he shows us some of his heart and some of his ways and some of the things that he cares about and uh, then of course Jesus becomes more than the earnest. Because in Him, uh, we are new creations in Christ. So He's no longer the earnest that the dove is revealing beforehand, like the ark. The, they're in the ark. They haven't, they've been in there with a bunch of beasts. And, you know, there's, they're, they're um, sheltering in place. And uh, it's hard on them. And they... You know, it's raining, so they're not getting to get out in the sun or anything. And they don't get to go to the grocery store and all this kind of stuff. They got all of this stuff going on. And uh, everything looks bad. And then the dove comes back with a twig and says, Hey, look at this. There's life out there. There's life, and it's his life. And, it's, and we're going to enter into Christ. We're going to enter into it. We're going to live there. When we get out of this ark, we're going to live there. So that's what I feel like uh, this appearing, appearing is about. It is the beauty. But, but see, we get, well, a lot of times we get to see the beauty of, the, of, of Jesus. But this is the beauty of the Father saying to Abra, Abram, you are now different. Now, Abram, Abraham might, as soon as he gets that name change, I guess I ought to read the scripture. This is uh, ver seven, chapter 17, verse 5. <clears throat> Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Okay, well, he hadn't had any kids yet. Now, what do you mean you've made me that? I'll, I'll be made that when I have kids and my kids have kids. And, and on and on. No. 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 Quit waiting for the manifestation of it. Quit looking for something with your eyes in the natural and trying to find uh, answers that are already within you when he said, 
you are Abraham, okay? In our case, um, you know, I, I reiterated some of the many things that he calls us, you know, uh, his temple, a new creation, all, all those things. I went through a little list of that so that we could say, you know, we hear that and we go, oh, I know that one. Oh, I know that one. Oh, yes, that one. But it's not enough to be able to list them. What he wants is <clears throat> for us to be with him, walking in covenant relations in what he says is true. And because he says it's true, we believe it's true. And, you know, we're not going to let anybody take that away from us, including Haman or Mordecai or any of these, you know, things going off in our head, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's going to be established by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to trust that, you know. And uh, this kind of faith now, because faith is still there, you see, faith led up to the uh, end of chapter 16. It's not now just walk. You walk by faith and you, you know, you walk in faith, but you're walking. You're taking hold of it and saying, I'm going to walk in this. I am going to lay hold of this. This is, uh, and, and when we say lay hold of it, not make it real, but make it mine by, by uh, um, being able to, uh, well, being able to resist the devil if necessary, because he's going to try to challenge all that being able to resist your past, that when you get into certain situations, it says you're a failure or you're no good or you're this and that. And you know, that, you know, that flies in the face of the Father who said that's not who you are now. You know, we need to stand up for Him. We, we stand up for our rights to be uh, um, rejected. <laughs> and we... We walk around with that chip on our shoulder and everything when we should walk around with the, 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 the if, if nothing else, if we don't have the glory of God on us, then we should walk around with the word of God, sharp two-edged sword in my mouth that says what he says and not what I say. Now, there's a difference between just doing that as a charismatic believer and doing that as Christ as your life. The other one is saying a whole bunch of stuff that is true of you while leaving out the you that you're one with. So it's not, they're going to fall. They're going to falter. They're going to, after a while, they're going to go, well, this doesn't work or whatever. Uh, those things are spoken to the son. And that son is going to come out of our loins eventually. God promised it. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be um, Lot. It's not going to be Eliezer. It's not going to be Ishmael. It's going to be the seed, but he's coming out of you. All right. So um, if you're, you know, that's why I said, as soon as he said, he said, I have made thee. We don't go, okay, I'm already it. And then just find out that, well, we don't act like it, think like it, or talk like it or anything. That's depressing. We, we say, if, if you say that it's made, then I'm standing with you. Covenant relations, right there. It's a beautiful thing. Co that's covenant relations. You know, we don't just go, well, God's way up there. I mean, it's as if, see, he didn't yell these things down to, to Abraham. He appeared and he said, okay, well, in that sense, <clears throat> He appeared and laid down his life on a cross and said, this is who you are now. Now walk ye in it. All right. So, see, I'm telling you, I just get excited about this. I haven't even done anything hardly but read that scripture. But it's just so, so um, exciting to know um, how he views these things and our place in covenant relations where we will we're going to be with him we're not going to just say you know oh, i'm a christian now and then go to church and <clears throat> every once in a while do good deeds and stuff covenant relations is being with somebody i mean that would be like uh, you know they call uh they call a marriage 
union, um, a marriage covenant. Did you know that? Marriage covenant. And if two people are getting married and they, ha they you know, enter into this marriage covenant, <clears throat> you don't just go live different places with different jobs and never see one another and, you know, have hardly any, you know, interaction, interaction, um, you know, or once a week go to a church where they show up or something like that. It is with this is, you know, and that's just a shadow. We know that from from Ephesians 5. But this isn't a shadow. And God isn't a shadow. The Father isn't a shadow. The, the Holy Spirit is every bit as real as anybody that you can see. And it, you know, it just goes to show, we, you know, some really have a hard time with, well, the Holy Spirit, I can't see him. I can't, you know, this and that. And, um, well, that just shows that, I mean, the, the relationships that we have, we have to see in that sense. Well, I mean, we're going through the pandemic right now. And, I mean, while we've got Skype in our favor and stuff, we don't see everybody on a regular basis. But look at us. We believe the same thing. We're, we're doing our best to walk in the same covenant together, not just a bunch of individuals believing, believing things, you know. And so, so there's life, and so there's uh, beauty, you know. I mean, this, and, and so, and Jesus, Jesus is, you know, I, maybe we think of Jesus as being more real than the Father, than the Holy Spirit, because we picture, you know, him on a throne with a white, white robes and sandals and long hair, and, and, you know, and we can pray to him. We say, oh, Jesus, and we should be praying to the Father in his name. But anyway, we, we, we think we're doing interaction there um, when what he's not wanting is religious interaction. He's wanting covenant relations. Religious interaction is what? Uh, same thing that the Buddhists do, same thing that the Hindus do, same thing that the Muslims do. We read a book, we go to a temple, we pray, we may all give, you know, that's, to be in a marriage relation is not to have religious ideas like that that you do, it's relational, it's, um, I don't even know how to put it, it's, it's, you know, it's him. And then he's saying, well, it's you and we're one. You know, I will be your God. And you shall be my people. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, so I wanted to, I didn't want to waste all of our time just going off, but I really felt to reread some, uh, just a couple of little paragraphs here of what I shared two weeks ago. And I'm asking you to please, and, and you, many of you probably are already there, but I'm asking you to please try to put aside all of the concepts, all of the preconceived ideas. Try to hear his heart and, and what's going on in this interchange. And it's and see, that's why Abraham's so big in the New Testament, in Galatians and all those places that I mentioned, is because to God, this guy, this is, a, he's, this is an example. The faith of Abraham is what I'm wanting here. See, not the faith of Christianity, if you will. The faith that Abraham had in relationship to being together with God. I call it covenant relations. It's a relationship built on what God wants and what we want. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, just as sure as God is a father, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, so Abram will become not just in name Abraham, just as sure as God is a father, so Abram will not just get a new name called Abraham. He will enter in because the 
Father has it and wants it and wants us to have it. Excuse me for pointing at you. Um, it's based on the assurance that the father wants his son. He changed Sarah to Sarah, Sarah to Sarah. Notice there, Sarah means princess. Okay, so he's, you know, and, and you know, as I said, these things, these things are given to us and we can receive them by faith and walk in them by faith. We can believe. We, we, we see that word faith has been kind of messed up by life, but we can believe God. We can believe him. We can believe that this is what he means. And if he means it, then I can be with him in it. It's that simple, you know. We go, well, it's not so simple for me because, you know, I'm a stinker. Well, we're all stinkers. We all need the Lord. Um, he calls him Abraham, which means father of a multitude. Prior to this name change, he was called exalted father. He will be exceedingly fruitful with kings and nations coming out of him. That's what the Lord says after that in these verses. Uh, a father of many nations have I made thee. The Lord makes it clear that in his heart, which is where it counts, he has already made him this, and we enter into that heart by believing him. Which means we're, we're believing in God, really God, not there's a God, there's a supreme being, you know. That, you know, devil believes that and trembles. We're believing into God himself. And we're, we're giving, he's giving us equipment, as it were. He's giving us glue that'll stick if we'll, if we'll extend our hands into his heart and hold on to him. See, we're trying to change us. Well, I've got to change this. I need to move this. And, oh, man, the, the, you know, it's so much humidity that my hair is out of control, you know. Well, you're out of control. I am. That's why we walk in this covenant relation with him, with his heart, with believing what's in his heart instead of trying to be something we think he wants us to be when we're applying it to the wrong person, us, instead of the, the seeds already in us. See, we need to water that thing every once in a while. Fresh water, fresh word. He has already made him this, but then he talks about what <clears throat> he will do in the future. I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. The term exceedingly fruitful goes beyond what was said before. God is now talking about nations and kings, and what, he, what he's saying is that you're thinking in terms of having a, a son that you can just play baseball with, all this kind of stuff, and he'll grow up and he'll give you grandchildren. And God's trying to say, this, this fruitfulness is so far beyond what you can imagine. And, and don't get distracted with kings and whatever. Um, think about King David. Mwah! That's what's going to come out of you. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow. Praise God. Um, and then uh, the, the subtitle, uh, and this is still reading this one last couple of, of uh, sentences here, was a new name and God's declarations. There are many things that God says concerning his people as positive declarations. And here's some of them. We are his church. We are his building. We are his temple. We are new creatures. We, we are living stones. And we could go on and on. But God, help us not to fall into the deception of thinking that his declarations of what we are is sufficient. Just because it's, 
then we're, we would write down his declarations and go, yeah, okay, you know. His, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You have to believe in him. You have to, the, the, the actual translation of word to believe, believe uh, him is believe into him. And what's in him is his heart. And you have to, to uh, be like a horse that's got blinders on. You have, to, you have to keep those blinders on and keep your focus on him and going forward. And then, you know, like horses do that. And it keeps them from being spooked. I mean, someone can come up from beside them and go, booga, booga, booga. And that horse doesn't go, Rah! you know. He's got his blinders and he just keeps going. So, um, but God help us not to fall into the deception of thinking that his declarations of what we are is sufficient because we're just writing down stuff and saying, that that's God's declaration. No, that came from his heart. That's God. I don't, I'm not saying that it's God, God. I'm saying it's every bit out of who God is and way more than what could be written down on, you know, ink and white paper. Way more. And it's eternal. I mean, even the Bible can be, you know, burned up. But that which is the word of his heart, that'll not change. Only we will change. You know, I always tell people, you know, God's not going to change. And then I say, guess what? The devil's not going to change either. So guess who they're hoping will change? They're hoping that God's hoping you'll change and stay with him. And the devil's hoping to break you from that. Don't change. Be with him. But you have to look into his, his heart, as it were. You have, to, you have to go to the scriptures like this and not read a story. That, I guess that's maybe a better way of saying it. We, can, we could just go to this thing and read a story and go, okay. And then we can hear somebody uh, highlight important things and think, oh, that's really good. It is really good, but it's better than good. It's God. It's God's heart. It is God's word to us. And if we, if we could stand with him, instead of our fears and our backgrounds and, our, and, and all of the declarations that, you know, somebody else told you about yourself that has hindered you and continues to hinder you. Um, trying to finish this sentence here, but God help us not to fall into the deception of thinking that his declarations of what we are is sufficient and thereby deny to ourselves the workings and dealings of God in our lives that will truly and effectually make us to be what he declares us to be. All right. So um, I wanted to come back. Uh, when he appeared, he said, I am almighty God. And we went over that and we went over it on, on the basis of that translation there. But in the Hebrew, uh, it's an interesting translation of Almighty God. It's uh, a little bit deceptive in a certain sense. <clears throat> the actual translation of El Shaddai, or El Shaddai, is uh, um, that he is the mighty breasty one. The mighty breasty one. Now you're thinking, well, what does it mean by that? Yeah, it's that. It's that. It literally means that. There's another translation for that. Glorious nurse. And it's not talking about a doctor nurse. It's talking about a nursing mother from her breast. From taking that which is inside of her and feeding it to the sons. To feeding it to the, as it were, the children to make them grow up into sons, if you will, using our examples here. Um, and so um, it's, I mean, what a great name. What a great reality. What a great understanding of God that he's saying, I am uh, the mighty breasty one. 
And of course, you know, who knows what Abraham or you would think of that. You know, well, we don't talk about those things or we don't, you know. Well, you know, uh, back then particularly, they didn't have other kinds of milk, you know, uh, or ways of producing milk. Um, they breastfed. And God wants to literally breastfeed, or if, if I may say it like this, God literally wants us to latch on to him and let what's in him that has made all of this nourishment, this rich breast milk, to come into us as we hold on and, and, and take in and, and, you know, and then, uh, you know, and it says that in First Peter, did, you knew that, right? It says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Well, it's not saying, and we'll get to that in First Peter, but it's not saying that you're new, that he's talking to newborn babes. He's saying, just like a newborn baby desires the milk by going, ah, I'm hungry, ah, you know, and he's, hey, sh it's almost time, ah, it's not going to stop. It's not going to go, uh, you know, well, we have, we have time restraints here, and, ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it doesn't work that way. It works this way. It works in the manner that we should be desire, like a newborn babe, we should be desiring that sincere milk of the word that we may grow by that, by, that, by all of that that's in him. All of that that's in him will nourish us instead of teach us. You know, you know, like nourish us through our mouth instead of teach us through our ears. And religion has, has perverted that to, and maybe it's not all perverted, but let me just say, I mean, it's, it's a, a perversion if teaching is really what's going on instead of an impartation of Christ. Um, and if we're, we're just hearing, I mean, God knows, you, you could get tired of hearing sermons, you know. Um, and I would be tired of it if I didn't get something new from the Lord and like milk. I mean, they're, you know, I mean, meat or whatever, but it's, you know, it's feeding me and it's changing me and it's encouraging me and it's depressing me. Because, <laughs> you know, the law contrast, you go, well, I still got, you know, but then you get your focus back. You get your heart back, you get it where it should be, and you get it on the Lord. In this manner, in this manner, not just, again, not just, you know, I mean, try, you know, if you were a baby and uh, your mom didn't know any better and she was sticking the nipple in your ear, you wouldn't grow by that. I'm sorry for using these examples, but it's, but, but it's really factual that you have to take in what is in that person and not just shove it, you know, in your ear or something like that because it's not going to reach the places it needs to in you. Hearing sermons won't reach the places that it needs to within you. Okay. So that's why I'm always saying, have your heart ready. Have, be open to Him. Pray in advance. Uh, you know, uh, I, we used to do it when we would all gather together, say at the Bible school or at the church, you know, come in ready and to open. Because, you know, if you don't, it takes half the service just trying to get everybody to a place where they can be open. You know, you got to fight off laundry and you got to fight off problems with your spouse and you got to fight off problems at work and fight off, you know, uh, unfixed things in your home or whatever, you know. Just, you know, like a newborn babe, be ready. Mom, I'm ready. <laughs> you know. Except for they're a little more demonstrative than that when they're ready. <clears throat> All right. 
Uh, so I've said all that and didn't read this, but, it's, uh, but I wrote, The mighty breasty one, our glorious nurse. Why? He takes what's in him and pours it into us for life and for strength. What is in him becomes that which is in us. Abraham, when God was ready to make his declarations, was taken from the name of Abraham, or Abram, made to be Abraham. God said, you shall not be called Abram anymore, but you shall be called Abraham. Okay. Now feed on that. That's the nurse. That's the milk coming out. All of this that he's saying, that's the milk coming out. You see that? And if we miss that, if we didn't understand that, then all this that's coming out in the story, you know, when we read Genesis, when anybody reads Genesis, we wouldn't see it as, oh my God, this is milk from the very heart of God. It's meant to strengthen me. I need to, I need to get in the right frame of mind. I need to quit being a, a big, a, a great, solid, you know, exalted father. I need to be, quit being a great, solid Christian. Now I'm going to listen to this. And only, the reason why I'm here is because, you know, I'm after God. How about, you know, I'm just a baby. I just want, I just want to feed on what's there. I need it. I need it. And I cry when I don't get it. <laughs> you know, instead of being something great, in other words, exalted father, father of many nations, you're going to keep pouring this out. You're going to pour it into your, your son and on down. <clears throat> um, in other words, I am the father of all things. And I'm making you a father. And of all things, it's going to be coming, Abraham. <clears throat> I want you to know this. So I can just hear the Father's heart. I am a father of all things. And I'm making you a father of all that is going to come from you. You're going to be like the first seed. You're going to be like Adam and Eve. And I'm going to bring something through you. And he doesn't say this, but because <clears throat> we talked about David coming down through him. I'm going to bring something through you at the right time that's going to be the son I've always loved and wanted. Literally coming out of your line, your lineage the son that I love now and I love before the world was and I will always love and I'm going to put him in you. I'm going to put that son in you and I'm going to love you because you are a bearer of the very beauty of beauties to me as a father and as his father and I'm covenanting with you along these lines, the lines of my heart, and I'm entrusting you with my son, with my son. And he did do that. He did do that. <clears throat> um, I'm making you a father of nations, so I've changed you and given you part of my name, Father. I have changed you now. You're not, you're not completely changed. You need to drink of the covenant, my part that I put in you. You need to give me faith back. You need to believe in my heart. You need to believe in my milk, if, if you will. You need to believe in this. And, and, um, and in making this exchange, I am also giving you, making you partaker of my eternal name, Father, Father, and I call you Abraham, Father of abundance. Let's pray. 
Father, we do, we do love you. We, we are, we are um, shook and yet we are strengthened. We are fearful and yet wonderfully made. <laughs> we are open and yet mindful that there are areas in us that are yet closed. We are hungry and yet we know we don't always eat when we should. We are caring and yet we know that we need to crawl up in your lap a little more often instead of prayer, religious prayer. You are wonderful, Father. You are wonderful. You want to give us your Son. You want that to happen so much. And all oh, the glories of your Son, Father, but we, we do bog down in our own lives in this earth. We're, not suppo we're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. But Father, we haven't got to the place of covenant relations where we walk, much less by faith. We walk by sight. And the sight that we walk by is our failures, our lack, our inadequacies. And Father, we, we meditate on, on too much when we were told by you in the Word to, to meditate on your Word day and night. Your Word, not scriptures, your word from your heart, to see that which is from your heart, the abundance of your heart. This, Father, it doesn't say out of the abundance of this, our heart, the scriptures speak to us, but the word out of the abundance of the heart. Our mouth speaks the word and your mouth speaks the word and you're faithful to that and you remain faithful. You are not changing. You are God and you change not. Father, we, we, we look at that theologically and we say God is God and he doesn't change. And this is, uh, <clears throat> it's, he's in, it's an incredible thing with God. But you're not saying that first to take it theologically as a truth that you are consistent but rather that desire that is in your heart that which you have formed the worlds for and laid the foundations that will not change and if we can, if we can, without fear, fears being preeminent, if we could just take a one, take one step toward you, one step a day. Not a not a big task, but if we could just find it, just some simple thing to say. I love you, or to say. You have spoken to me your heart and I want the Holy Spirit to make it spirit in life. Father, all the prayers in the world are not to be measured against those things that would walk in covenant with you in a true relational union. So I pray for us, Father, and I pray that I be included. Oh, beautiful Holy Spirit, Father, that you may allow that dove to show us the earnest 
And then in showing us the earnest, show us that the ark has landed and we are now in that new creation. We're not fighting the beasts anymore. We can leave the ark and we can enter into that through the cross, through the death. Father, that sounds like words. That sounds like theology. That sounds like the unattainable. But you are able, you are able to make it beautifully formed to be your son in an earthen vessel. We pray together. You said if any two of us would pray. We pray together. We ask you. We ask you for his sake for his sake and for your for your glory allow new movements of the holy spirit upon us to show us to secure us in in anchoring ourselves into your heart father blessed be you the god and father of our lord jesus christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Father, that we are accepted in the beloved Son, the firstborn. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, such a blessing for me to be with you and for you to be, for us to be, Love you, love you, love you. Keep, keep going, keep going. Keep looking up. Stop looking down so much. Bless you guys.